Hey everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. A lot's happening here at the homestead. Uh, we're putting in a new floor in one of our bedrooms. We had a moisture problem that led to uh, the floor rotting out, so we have to get that replaced. But I'm taking a break and coming outside while there is a break in the weather. We've been getting a lot of rain and storms and stuff um, past couple weeks or so. It's been really, really rainy autumn. But anyway, um, it's, it's good for some things, so it helps keep the fire danger down and all that kind of stuff. So as I'm taking my break, I figured I'd take a walk and uh, show you guys what's going on here. Um, things are starting to wind down. My squash are still hanging on here. Um, as far as hanging on the on the, the vine, the vine's basically dying. And eventually we'll take all these squash inside. But uh, I want them out here as long as I can. And we're not expected to have our first frost till I think uh, two weeks. So I want them out here as long as they can be out here uh, to help them cure, uh, to prevent them from rotting. And then we have, this is our uh, dog pen. It used to be our chicken coop uh, a year ago. But in the back there, I'm zooming in. You can see, well, may not, it's kind of grainy. We actually have some volunteer squash back there. I think those are spaghetti, not sure. I'll find out when I try cooking them. Um, I definitely won't save the seeds from those because I don't know what they are. And uh, yeah, but these guys I will. So these are celebration squash. It's a type of heirloom acorn and you can see the acorn shape there. So Then my glass gem corn is finishing up its um, realm here. It's starting to dry out. But uh, let's see what we got here. I haven't really looked. So bear with me here as I open this up and we'll see if we actually got anything yet. I'll set you down for a minute. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. All right, back up we go. So this is the glass gem corn. This stalk's actually drying That's, and it came right off. But you can see how beautiful I don't know if it'll focus real well. Beautiful the colors are. They look like little glass gems, hence the name. So I'm just going to set this aside and let it continue to dry in here. And we have plenty more that are still still uh, green and they haven't quite stopped growing yet. So patience, patience, patience. All right. This is what the garden's looking like right now. It's looking a little bare um, as things are starting to wind down. This is my herb bed here. We've cut this back a little bit. The lemon balm is really vigorous. This is a uh, three-year-old lemon balm now. So it was really starting, you can see how big the plant is and was starting to um, come over where we don't want it. I'll actually be transplanting either two, uh, one or two of these over into our chicken run because it's supposed to be really good for uh, chickens too. So, and then we have calendula and valerian. This valerian, in the springtime when it first grows, it gets as tall as this old building here. It, it reaches to the roof. And then uh, once those shoots die off, it grows back again, just to uh, make sure it's still nourishing the roots underneath. This is a three-year-old plant now, so if I wanted to, I could actually uh, dig down and harvest the roots and dry them out. This is a useful aid in anxiety and sleep. So this is this is what the plant looks like. Um, like I said, when it's in the spring, when it first grows, it gets really, really tall. And it has some really pretty flowers on it. This is a new plant to the garden this year. This is lemon mint. And I just love the colors. It doesn't look like a regular mint, but um, it's really, really pretty. Uh, I love mints in here. It uh, helps with uh, deterring bad pests. And also with the beautiful flowers, it brings in good good pollinators and, and things like that. So that's new this year. And then we had a whole bunch of chamomile right here. This pot got moved here out of the way. This used to have chamomile yet. Then our chives, I mean our chives, once you plant chives you almost can't get rid of them. Um, these roots, we tried digging it up and the roots are like a foot down into the ground. 
and it's just yeah it's a mess but anyways um, they're very good we're actually going to be harvesting some probably tomorrow and uh, drying them out you can see I have quite a few chives there so that's excellent and then this is um, pink hyssop I have blue hyssop just a little bit down this is new this year the white whorehound, um, this is new this year only because it's a new plant. I actually had a plant in here before, but it wasn't doing very well. This year, it is doing excellent. I just thank the Lord for that because it is doing really, really well. And I used to have yarrow back here. I still do, but I thinned it out uh, a little bit. And it actually didn't do as well this year as it did last year. Last year, it grew up like this this whole tall up here almost like the valerian but this year it's it stayed low profile and no flowers so i'll have to research that a little bit these are just containers of uh snapdragon flowers tall snapdragon flowers it filled in the bare space and uh, with the flowers brings in more pollinators this is echinacea or purple comb flower and uh, it's dying back you can see all the seed heads on here and then there's there's still a few more flowers still left but it's starting to die back for the year this is the blue hyssop really really pretty and then <laughs> this is our sage plant there's a, milk, a couple of milkweeds in here this sage plant is also three years old so um, if you grow sage correctly you're not really supposed to prune it the first year um, if you're trying to grow it to to keep it um, as a perennial, you're supposed to kind of not trim it that much the first year, um, so it has time to really grow and develop, and then uh, it'll come back the succeeding years. And uh, so, like again, this is a three-year-old plant, quite the bush, huh? And then right behind it, we planted a new bee balm. We have another one in the garden. I'll show you a little bit. Um, but it's starting to do really well. It's really got a lot of nice new growth on it. So I'm really excited about that. These are uh, wild edibles. These are the narrow leaf plantain. They're considered a weed by many people, but it's actually a wild edible. Tucked under the sage here, this is brand new. This is yellow echinacea or yellow purple coneflower. And this year um, it didn't grow very tall. It didn't put out um, flowers or anything it's just establishing itself next year i expect it to, to be about that size there and instead of the purple it'll be yellow these are my fig trees um i had one here last year but it didn't come back so i took it out and it actually was still alive it just was not doing very well as far as growing so i put it in a pot put it uh, where i could have it in the greenhouse and that helped bring it you know really start the growth process and things and then I replanted it and I'll show you how that's doing in a little bit but these are new this one is doing very very well I am excited to see about this and we're gonna heavily mulch this um, this growth actually will die over the winter and then in the spring it'll bring up new shoots at least that's what it's supposed to do so even though this looks beautiful now all this will die so but with this growth it's showing me that it's a very healthy plant now this one over here, you can see it's still really puny. It doesn't have a lot of growth yet. So um, I'm going to care for this the same way. I'm going to heavily mulch it. But I'm not going to be surprised if that doesn't come back right away in the spring. I might have to dig that up, pot it, put it in the greenhouse, and baby it a little bit to, to get it going again. And then once it gets its root structure going and gets really strong where it can start giving itself its own nutrients, it'll be all right. It's just one of those plants, sometimes you have to baby it. And then tucked under here, I have these here. I have baby seedlings. Um, these are Thai basil. And then I have Italian parsley here. I have chickens now that freely enter the garden to till and add their manure and stuff to fertilize the garden. So I have to protect little things like this, otherwise they get dug up. This is the other lemon balm that I'm going to be uh, moving. It's just in the way right here. It's just a mess right here. So I'm going to move it over to where it can be better utilized. Because mint, um, uh, if you don't know, it's a very invasive plant. It will spread like wildfire. But if you take uh, your, your time and take precautions to keep it in check, it's a very, very beneficial plant to have in your garden. So we're going to be moving that um, over to the chicken run. And then here's some more parsley that I have. 
getting ready to harvest. Um, since it's been cooler, it hasn't bolted. It's stayed, stayed nice and green, and so I'll be able to get some fresh parsley before the winter. The leeks here I thinned out. I had them planted too close together, so they kind of grew like green onions. They're still really tiny. So I thinned them out a bit, and we'll see how they do before the frost. And then in here I got, uh, this is rainbow chard. Not doing too well this year because the kale um, kind of shaded it, so it wasn't getting a lot of green. So I'm going to be moving the kale to a different spot next year because I forgot how big this gets. And uh, you can see there's a lot of damage. A lot of damage. But this is um, perfectly normal because this is from my chickens. When my chickens come in here and they do their business and stuff, they also enjoy some greens and things like that. And I don't mind. Um, you know, I've already got as much kale as I want right now and there's still plenty, plenty to share. So, um, kind of like the bugs and the vermins, they get in my garden once in a while. There's plenty of food to share, you know. Um, I try to take precautions to keep it to a minimum, but, you know, God's creatures deserve to eat, too. So, in fact, here's another chicken right over there coming in. Alright, so this is my peppers. I have a very hard time growing peppers, but somebody gave me a tip on how to grow them successfully next year. So, I'll try it again. I've tried growing these for four years, and I very rarely get anything bigger than that little pepper there. So, we'll try again. There's my rooster, Mr. Butterball. He's looking a little rough because we had some chickens that um, actually are known for feather eating. So he used to have a beautiful tail. And if he turns around all the way, you'll see he's quite bare. Um, they've ripped out quite a few of his feathers. Just not very nice chickens. So we got rid of those chickens and we're hoping that Butterball will get his beautiful tail feathers back. But he does a good job watching his flock. So. But this right here, this was my potato or tomato bed right here. We just pulled all them out because they were all dead. The sunflowers, we've been starting to lay them down so the chickens can enjoy the, the sunflower seeds as well. This is tansy, brand new this year. This can be an invasive plant, but I've been told that it's very easy to actually keep in check. With invasive plants, you have to kind of research them and see which ones you can actually easily control and which ones you can't control, like um, daylilies and things like that. They have a tendency for the rhizomes to, to really breed new, new um, uh, uh, plants and things like that so even if you dig it up and stuff there's still there's a piece left it'll grow a new plant so daylilies um, let's see mint well mint's not too bad uh, depending on the mint but it can spread like wildfire too so you have to do your research to see what plants you can control as they spread and what ones you ha you can't that you actually have to put them in a container this here, this is a peanut plant, and uh, this is my first time. I tried growing it last year, but it didn't do very well. This year, it's a gorgeous looking plant. It's not as big as I would hope it to be, but for um, right now, it to me, it's a success. And we have to wait till the first frost or second frost or whatever to start killing the plant before we can dig it up and actually see what it looks like. And then our peach pink coxcomb. Um, it's an heirloom and it's really, really beautiful. When it first started growing, it had these little spikes like the um, Indian paintbrush, I think is what my husband calls them. You know, it's in the Celosia family. It just had these little spikes here. Whoops. <laughs> oh, so thankful that bumblebees don't sting unless you really upset them. Because I just hugged Mr. Bumblebee there. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, see, I just touched that bee. I know, I'm crazy. But bumblebees are your friend, and as long as they don't feel threatened, they're not going to sting you. I have one over there, too. But anyway, so I'm glad he didn't feel threatened when I hugged that little flower. Anyways, we had these little spikies here, and then they grew into this, the coxcomb. My husband has never seen that, so that is really cool. But you can see uh, also how tall this plant got. My husband's never seen that either. So, um, you know, it's amazing what actual heirloom variety plants do. I'm going to try to move this without bothering Mr. Brumblebee. But you can see my other coxcomb celosia down there. It's kind of short, but really big flower head down there. 
Um, so anyways, um, yeah, he's never seen something like this before. So just a testament that, you know, sometimes you got to try new seeds because you never know what you're going to see. And then we've got our um, marigolds. I have two kinds of marigolds. This is the giant bicolor. Really, really pretty. And then next to it, we got the Gallardia. Another plant that's my husband's favorite. And also the bees too, you can see the bee there. Must be getting to rain. Cause you can see I can touch this guy and he's not bothered. So I think it's gonna rain soon. Um, but anyway. And then we got more bee balm. I was going to harvest some um, because we use a lot of bee balm for medicinal purposes. But I noticed that my plants covered in um, downy or yeah downy mildew, um, so it's not it's not edible. So because you don't want to be ingesting that. So we're just going to let it be. But yeah, that's my bee balm there. So excited about that. This is three years old as well. A lot of my plants are about three years old, my, my herbs. This is my rose bed, or what started at was my rose bed. You can see I have all sorts of stuff in here. I just transplanted the rhubarb, um, but I've got kale in here. This was um, extra kale because I had to thin out my kale bed. And then I have um, the thyme. Thyme is a good friend of rose. So rose and thyme go together. I have my sweet potatoes tucked in there. I had uh, my grapevine. It looks really, really rough because it was attacked mercilessly by the Japanese beetles. And then our volunteer squash kind of came up and took over it and was strangling it as well. So, but um, it's still alive and uh, I might give it some fertilizer before um, too long. I think you're supposed to give it a uh, shot of fertilizer in the fall to help it make sure it has a good root system to make it through the winter. And then these here, of course, are my other potato beds. I, ha I put p potatoes in each of these tires to kind of mark where they are and so tires don't end up in the dump. And then my other tomato potato bed is right there. <clears throat> so all those have been planted. They should overwinter and if I um, bury them with mulch they'll do just fine and they'll kill all this grass we have my gardens bite, butted up right against a cow pasture so I fight with the grass coming in but if I put enough mulch down it's not a problem this is new this year this is peppermint um, my other peppermint plant did not survive and I usually plant my mints like peppermint spearmint chocolate mint in containers because these spread like really crazy you can see starting to spread like crazy um, but right now I just wanted to get this plant in the ground and get it established because peppermint's kind of a vital plant to have for me as well for medicinal purposes so I don't mind if it spreads right now in the spring I'll clean it up a little more after it comes back and shows it's well established so sometimes you just gotta let the plant do its thing until you know it's really good and healthy and then you trim it back these are what's left of my white radishes and I've let these guys go to seed. This guy right here, he's like that big. He's huge. So I let it go to seed because, uh, yeah, I can show you right here. I see it now. You see how big that guy is? Whoops, sorry. See how big that guy is? He's huge. But the perfect specimen to save seeds from because you want a very big, vibrant um, fruit. Or vegetable to gather your seeds from. You don't want to gather your seeds from something really puny. Yeah, the wind's starting to pick up here, so it's going to be raining shortly. Here's some more leeks we had. We had a bunch of sunflowers here. We just ripped all these out. And as you can see, the weeds are just coming in. But all this will be taken care of um, next year. We're going to be putting um, our cardboard and newspapers down and covering it with thick mulch again, and that will put this at bay. At first I'll probably have to move my lamb's ear. You see that tucked in the sorrel there? Those are actually both medicinal plants, the lamb's ear and the sorrel. <clears throat> and my Brussels sprouts, they're doing really well. I gave them um, bone meal 
because they were struggling to actually produce the fruit. They're very vibrant plant, plants, but that's because they were getting too much nitrogen. So I needed to give them some phosphorus, and now they're really starting to put out some uh, sprouts. So, and then my mullein plant. These you'll find in the wild quite often. It's considered a weed by many, but again, it's a medicinal plant um, for respiratory problems, so I grow it in my garden. I do a lot of medicinal herbs in my garden because that's what I use to treat my family's symptoms um, that are acute. You know, if there's something really bad, of course, I go to the doctor, but <laughs> anyways. So these are my bumblebees, my pink bumblebees. I love this tomato. It's the only tomato that is left because it is still green and still growing. Um, I don't expect it to last much longer, but I'll take what I can get. But they're very beautiful and they taste really yummy. Uh, but uh, this was my triumphal violetta bean. And uh, it's dying back. We've actually been starting to save the seeds. My Kentucky Wonder Pole beans, same thing, they're starting to die back. So we've been saving the seeds. And then um, what we don't harvest, I mean, there's a lot of beans here that we haven't harvested because I was really still recovering from surgery. And then just one thing after another. So you see there's a lot of beans here that are actually not gonna be any good because they're too big now. But these will actually go to uh, my chickens and ducks for feed. So even though us humans won't be eating them, they will still get used for feed. And then this is my pie pumpkin. I've been harvesting some of it, but um, I had two that weren't quite ready yet, so they're still on the vine. <clears throat> I've actually had to trim this back too because this was trying to grow new growth and it's too late in the year. So I've trimmed it back quite a few times so it puts more energy into what's already growing instead of, you know, wasting new energy. And then this is my um, Cherokee, of tra uh, Cherokee Trail of Tears bean. And it's basically died back and we've harvested quite a few of the seed pods already. This is a multi-purpose bean. You can either use it as a green snap bean, it's actually purple, or uh, you let it dry and you can use it as a dried bean. So we've done both and we actually like them, they taste pretty good. So again, this is the Cherokee Trail of Tears beans. And then my elderberries. We got this guy that's had a struggle most of his life to actually make an appearance because it kept getting knocked down and broken. You can see it's doing very, very well. It's still got elderberries that are ripening there. I've harvested quite a few and actually filled my jar for the year, so I'm letting the birds have the rest. My duckies and my one lone chicken. Long story about why she's in there. And then my other elderberries, and you can see how tall this guy is. And this one here, I would say that's at least eight foot, almost nine foot tall. So very, very thankful. This is a three-year-old plant. So yeah, that's a nine foot tall elderberry um, stem. So really cool. Hi, chicken! So yeah, these guys are in here doing their thing now. Since most of my plants have died back, they've been kept out all summer, um, you know, because we don't want them eating all of our crops. But then in the fall, we let them in here as things start to die back. So here's another sage plant. That's a one-year-old sage plant. You see, I really haven't trimmed it. I've just let it go. Um, this is more mullein plants. They didn't get as tall as this one because they were really shaded by um, the rhubarb used to be here. They used to have three plants of rhubarb. So this got really shaded. And so I grew this tall. But I have it marked so it can grow again next year. I just transplanted, or planted I should say, um, carrots. Those are carrots that I was growing this year. I had them in buckets and I want to save seeds, so I took the biggest ones that I had and put them in the ground here. That way they can grow roots over winter and then come back next year, and um, they're a biennial. So I won't get another carrot, um, so to speak, but they'll put out the seeds so I can um, save seeds from it and grow more next year. So that's what you do with carrots, get seeds. 
This is another uh, sweet potato. Again, it was shaded a lot by the rhubarb here, so it didn't really vine out a lot. But we'll see what's underneath when it's time to harvest that. Here's that other fig tree I was telling you about in the beginning. Uh, we had dug it up and pampered it and everything, and you can see it's about as big as that other one that for some reason took off like crazy this year. So we'll see how it continues to grow. I keep it marked like this and whatever so we, the chickens don't dig it up and things like that. I'm very particular with some of these things that the chickens and the cats don't disturb it. And then more of the snapdragon flowers. I love snapdragons, they're my favorite. <laughs> This is where I used to have bush beans, but we had the bean beetle come in really bad. Um, I thought it was slugs, but we tried the slug stuff and it wasn't getting rid of them. We had a few, but not many, um, but it was the bean beetle. And so we decided we're not going to do bush beans anymore. We're going to do the pole beans, keep them up off the ground, and uh, we should have a better harvest that way. So what I've done is I've planted in here garlic for the first time. I'm actually growing garlic to, to eat. Because usually I'll put garlic here and there in the garden um, because it's a good pest deterrent and it, it helps with other things. But this year I actually have a planned bed that I'm actually growing garlic um, to use. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and probably a month or so, we're actually going to be uh, putting a lot of mulch down over top of this um, to really keep it sheltered. And um, we'll see how it turns out next year. And then these right here are mustards, mustard plants. Um, I've let them go to seed, and they're a really beautiful plant. Um, so I'll be collecting the seeds from those eventually as well. And then my compost pile over here, you can see I have a huge and maybe it's a couple of them, um, tomato plants. They've got tomatoes on them, but they haven't ripened or anything, so I'm not sure if they're going to or not, but just shows you what sometimes you get out of your compost pile. <clears throat> That's my lemongrass. It did very well in this tote this year. I had it planted in the ground last year, and it didn't do very well. But this year, having it in this tote, it seemed to do very, very well. So I might do that again next year. This is my cat mint. I transplanted it from the rose bed. And uh, this is a mint that's easy to contain. So you just make sure you clip the runners and it does all right. But cat mint's another mint that's very good to have in your garden. And not just for the kitty cats either. So, and then I have broccoli that's going to seed. So, I really like the, the dainty flowers that some of these plants put out as they go to seed. It's really interesting to see. And then here, this is my asparagus bed, and I'm just surprised. Usually asparagus is a spring plant, so but I have a lot of new growth because I had planted quite a few brand, uh, seedlings in here last year. But I have a lots of, you can see that asparagus is a very dainty fern when it grows. You see have a lot of it. And I can't really clean up this bed too much because there is a lot of new seedlings in there. So... I'll eventually be getting that stupid bucket out of there, but it's broke. Um, but anyways, I'm just so excited to see all these new seedlings. And um, that gives me hope that maybe next year I might actually have a couple of sprigs of asparagus from this. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Here's another sage. This is a, a one-year-old plant, too, as well. So, and then I planted some borage. And I wasn't reading the instructions carefully on the borage. I was thinking it was a perennial. So I was going to get it in the ground and established, and then uh, you know I'll be here next year. But it's it's only an annual, so probably before the first frost I'll be harvesting the the leaves to to eat. And then this is our corn bed for our sweet corn. I actually took that corn out um, because it didn't do well at all. So and then over in these buckets. I have um, some more Thai basil, and then I have some carrots planted too, some uh, Danver halves, and we'll see if I actually get any carrots before the snow flies, so to speak. So that is what the garden is looking like right now. There's a lot of stuff that's died back, a lot of bare spots, but there's still a lot of growth going on. So that is the journey today. 
I just thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are blessed and I hope it gives you um, ideas on what to do with your garden including this idea right here uh, where you see these forks uh, I actually planted more of that garlic I was telling you about I actually had quite a bit to plant and I have lots of cats and the chickens and so to protect that area from being dug up I put forks and that prevents animals from being there because they don't want to get poked so anyways, um, I just hope that uh, this video and the other videos I've shared with you are a blessing and it gives you creative ways to take care of your garden. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Have a blessed journey of your own. Bye-bye.